And the tea is the soft launch is coming. Yeah. Like, did you watch me like climb onto a pole and croc heels? <laughs> if someone just wants to date but doesn't actually want to date but wants to like merge careers, I'm ready. Oh my oh, yay! god. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry for the daddy song. <laughs> I just need to just break immunity no. with it. Ramble. Pretty Basic. This week's episode is brought to you by Macy's. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Pretty Basic. I am your co-host, Remy Cruz. And I'm Alicia Marie. And you may be wondering if you're watching the YouTube video, who is that cherub just sitting across on the, just the couch floating. next to us? Floating. It's Chris Olsen. Oh. We need a sound effect there. Same. Editor. Same. <laughs> yes. We're so excited to have you on. Welcome to the Pretty Basic Studio. Thank you for having me. It's so beautiful in here. You're beautifully lit, angelic. Yeah. These cathedrals. Cathedral ceilings. <laughs> With God. our like beautiful uh, soundproofing. As you can it's, see some texture. It's so beautiful. It's crazy. It just goes on and on and on. Well, yeah, we, you guys should get in the studio one day. It's huge. Honestly, <laughs> one actually initially we were going to have a DJ booth in that corner. Yeah. But then we realized it's off camera and also we're not DJs. So that, we don't need right, that. Right, right. That would have been tough. A little too much, we right? We never even showed that side of the set. So I feel like we could have even made it smaller. Yeah, that is true. There's a lot of fun stuff happening in here. Thank um, you so much. But it's all, oh my God, and there's my name. Yes. Um, <laughs> great. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff. I love being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. Obviously you are like a giant, massive, beautiful TikTok star uh, among other yeah. things, but especially TikTok, of course. Yeah. Well, thank you. First of all, um, <laughs> I love those descriptive words. Yes. I have been on TikTok now for like two years, but, um, I, I've just like, I, I, I feel like I've had many lives on the app. Like, I have been thought of as many different kinds of creators <laughs> while being on there. Um, and I love it. I don't know. It's like such a fun platform to be on. What's your favorite title that you've been given over the years then? Honestly, I am I live for being like being the person that everyone is just like, how does he know everyone? I <laughs> love that. Um, and I live for being the person that's just like, how is he everywhere? <laughs> because a lot of the time I don't even know. I don't know how I know these people. I don't know. But I, I think that the honest truth of it is like, I, whenever I meet someone, if we have good energy and I'm like, we should do something sometime. Like I mean it. And I think those words get thrown around a lot, especially like especially in LA. In LA. Oh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, oh my God, well we should hang out. And yeah. then you'll never see that person again. Yeah. So you're actually the person who follows up in text and is like, perfect. So next Wednesday, let's get coffee. Yeah. That's like good. I love following through and I love just making something happen. And then like occasionally if there's, if there, if the right moment happens, like making a video out of it. I hate the word like collabing, even though that's what I do. Cause sometimes I think when you collab with someone, it can be very contrived and yeah. inauthentic. Yeah. But like if you just vibe with someone and then happen to make videos with them, like really fun things can come out of it. So I feel like, th yeah, the person who somehow knows everyone is like my favorite title currently. I love that. Now yeah. that's a good one. Do you have like a shit ton of friends? Is it like hard for you to keep up with all your friends? Yes and no. Like there's, I have my very close friends and they're like, there's a pretty small group of people I talk to every day. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like there are a lot of people I have in like my outer circles who I just like love and connected to, but I'm not talking to all the time. But I've never thought of myself as that person who's like, I'm friends with everyone. I'm just like, I have all of, the, like in college, I, I stayed in my apartment. I like, I didn't leave. I didn't, really? I was not very social. I would like go to class, go to the gym, go to bed and like not hang out with anyone outside of classes. It was very different than I am now. And we've heard you're actually like deep down kind of shy. Yes, I am I am an introvert. And I, I know, don't believe that. No, I know, I know, I know that's crazy. But like anyone who knows me will tell you like I need my alone time. Okay. And a lot of my friends can sense when there is a point at which um, if we're hanging out that like, it's done. <laughs> like, like my, my, uh, my friend Kara will be at my house or be, be, she'll be at my apartment and we'll just be hanging out and like, you know, watching something. And then I'll like take a breath a certain way. I'll be like, oh. You're and, kind then of a diva. And, then, and then she'll be like, she'll be like, okay, I will see you later. Wait, I love and that. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to go, but like, <laughs> I should probably go to bed. But like, like, I can get the door. Yeah, but like, <laughs> do you want an Uber? I'll yeah, call it. yeah, but like, Honestly, I'll call your Uber. That's great though because there's been a few friends in my life over the years where like they don't get the hint to leave. They can't read the room. Where I yeah. do the sign. I'm like, 
ah, turning off lights. Uh. They're still on the couch. I'm like, ah, anyways, so I need to. No. Um, yeah. yeah. I love my alone time. Like if like today has been a pretty like out of the house social day. And like when I get home and when like I finish everything I need to do, like I will not be doing anything tonight. I will be like hibernating I, I actually I actually sleep like this no oh my God, Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. no like I literally I I'm not a side sleeper I'm not a, I'm either I sleep like this <laughs> and don't and move then, and then the only thing that moves is <laughs> that is literally how I go to bed and it's like I'm a, I'm a wonderful partner to sleep with I was not gonna that say you're the best person to sleep with ever not that anyone's also, in the bed the are you <laughs> sure like, Damn. you don't want to divulge us with some secrets no I wish I wish I wish there was like a, and the tea is the soft lunch is coming there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing going on um but no, I do sleep like I'm dead. For those of you who are only listening, um, one, obviously you need to watch the YouTube. But two, oh. he's having his hands by his side. It's and a little corpse-like. Crossed, right. crossed over his chest like a pencil. Yes, I sleep like I'm in a coffin, like I'm preparing for that. That's good. At the end of the day, we all are. We all it's end very up there, peaceful, you know? actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think very that's good. peaceful. I like that. Very peaceful. All right. Well, I want to know about how you're just like, how you came to be on TikTok. Oh, my God. Well, it started... <laughs> Tale as old as time. Yeah. <laughs> it started in the pandemic, like uh, really early on. I want to say like April. Yes. Uh, April 11th. I made my first TikTok video. <gasps> okay. I remember the date. Um, and it was just like I was with my boyfriend at the time and we did like a fitness challenge where it was like doing like push ups or something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think I got like 3,000 views and I was like, <laughs> I made it. Fame looks good on me. <laughs> wow. Um, so I so I was like, wow, I should just keep doing that. And I kept making them and it was like fine. But then um, August, I started doing videos like specifically with my significant other doing like, let's like, let me like ask you questions or let me do these like couple pranks on you and see how they do. And I remember like every day for like two weeks, they started going super viral. Wow. Um, and so we went from like regular amount of followers to like 2.2 million. Oh my God. Um, in like two weeks. And, and this is the like, thick of the pandemic, correct? Yeah. This is August, 2020. Wow. So it was like, oh shit. And I was starting my senior year of college at Berkeley College of oh, Music. Oh, you were in school still the time? Yes. <gasps> but now it was online. Oh. So I opted to go. Um, I just like moved out to LA um, because we were in his like, tiny apartment in Harlem and it was just like we don't want to spend the rest of the pandemic here let's go where there's going to be sun so we moved out to LA even though we couldn't still leave the house and then kept doing TikTok over here because we were like I don't know maybe this thing is going to be like what's going to happen and so I finished out my senior year online while starting to do like TikTok as a real job and like got management and got an agent and started doing like the brand deals and such. Did you know to look into management stuff? What were your, was your inbox just flooded? Like, oh it, yeah, everything came to us immediately. Wow. Like it was, it was kind of, it was not like the average like climb of things mm-hmm. of like, okay, like I'm starting to build a following. Maybe I should start reaching out to managers. It was like, because the blow up was so quick and huge, it was just like, a brand was reaching out and then a management was reaching out and then this, and my, my dad is a lawyer. So oh, that was very so helpful because <laughs> we got our, our, a contract from the first management company that reached out and I wanted to be like, yes, cause they like, were like working with some big people. So I was like, for sure we should just say yes. But I was like, let me just send it to my dad first, just in case. And uh, right when he looked at it, he was like, this is a mess. You oh cannot say yes to them. And so it took us then a while to talk to a few other management companies before we found the right one. Thank God. I Thank know. God. Because I would have signed and said yes. And like one of my other friends signed and said yes. And li- like, li- they're not like a horrible management no. company, but like um, I'm much happier with the way yes. the situation p- panned out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then it just kind of became the job like there were it, there was a very quick transition. There have been a lot of changes in my life that have happened since then. And so now I feel like my job is consistently finding new ways to like have an uh, have an audience or attract new people or like continue making fun content that inspires me on the app as well. There's been like a big life to it that has gone like in and out of how I feel like I've started creating. Do you have a TikTok that you made that's your favorite? Like right now, if you're like, damn, that one... Well, two days ago, oh okay, I just, love it. We uh, I just posted with my friend Shree, um, the uh, 
my most viewed video ever. It became the most viewed video within two days. Oh my God. Which is craziness because like it takes a while. Yeah. Usually like, you know, the, the, the views in the past have been like, they gained a lot. And then like over a few weeks, it kept going higher and higher and higher. This one after two days is almost at 30 million views. Holy shit. Um, and it's us singing. It's, it's her doing a, an insane riff. Go check it out. She's amazing. We were like, oh, this is going to be fun. Like people are doing this challenge and it's going well, but we did not expect like it to suddenly be the biggest <laughs> video it, I have oh. ever posted on anything. Like that's the most viewership. Wait, and I love that it's you guys singing. Like it's like that's yes. to be like, damn, I'd be like, I made it, man. Well, <laughs> Thank you, Berkeley. <laughs> what's crazy though is even though I went to Berkeley, I was always so scared to sing on social media. I was terrified because I was just like, it's su it's such a vulnerable thing. And yeah. like when you're being funny on TikTok, people are already being sarcastic in your comment section because it's like, LOL, funny. And like singing is a vulnerable, scary thing. So when you sing and you decide to go the serious route, it's like you open up yourself to for people to just be like mean. And TikTok mm -hmm. is the scariest for sure of all platforms. TikTok, you think? Oh, I think for sure. Like I think Twitter is. Oh, uh, okay. Actually, I do agree with that. <laughs> I, do, I forgot Twitter about Twitter. Is terrifying. Sorry, Twitter. You're right. Yeah, no, but TikTok can definitely get to be a dark place. But with Shree, she actually like was encouraging me to post some of these videos. And I was like, I don't know if I can. And she was like, just do it. Like, um, and like she had a lot of faith in that it would go well because she had heard me sing before. And I was like, fine, I'll like post one. We'll see how it goes. The first one went okay. And then the second one ended up, uh, going very viral. It was me singing, um, as the world caves in, yes. um, by Matt Maltese. And, and then I was like, okay, I've, I've gotten some validation in this. And then I remember the third one didn't do well. Oh, and no. I called her crying. Yes. And I was like, I was like, I just like, I should never sing again. And she was like, Chris, if the last two went well, it doesn't mean that you're suddenly a bad singer. It just means the algorithm didn't pick up that one. And you're, yeah. and I was like, fine oh. but there's the mind games that come with it so yeah the fact that my most viewed video now ever is one of us singing makes that's me so happy sick. that's amazing I, love that. I remember for me from the outside looking in when you started tiktok i was watching in the pandemic and i watched all your like funny videos and then all of a sudden i saw singing when i was like holy shit he can sing too like it felt like almost like a secret talent New that you were sharing now. But obviously <laughs> right, right. then when it came out that you like actually went to school for music, it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense because you're so talented. Thank but you. truly on TikTok, it just felt like, a, oh my God, he's like so talented at anything that he tries to do. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Like I, you- when we're in our own bodies, we imagine like everyone can just see us exactly for who we are. Mm -hmm. But then we decide to share something new about ourselves and everyone's like, oh my God, I had no idea. And I was like, oh, right. Like you don't know anything about until I share. Until you with share you. it. Same with um, Brittany Broski. When she just like, I what? Mean, she's incredible. <laughs> what? I know. She is what? incredible. Um, and it, I still get comments on my singing videos these days of people being like, I had no idea he yeah. sang and stuff like that. But you know, that's, I think that I, 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 there are, there is a world in which people sometimes get annoyed at those kinds of comments. Cause they're like, well, why didn't you watch my other videos? And I actually think I, I like am now coming around to being like, no, I love those because that just means I'm reaching another yes. person who didn't know I could sing before. And like, welcome. Like, I'm so glad you're now able to see this other side of me or yeah. this side of me. And I feel like that's been my favorite journey over the past like year with TikTok ever since a lot changed was like now being able to show all of these different sides of me that people have received really beautifully. Um, which I think can be tough occasionally, like changing niches in yeah. a way or oh, anything sure. like that. I think sure. that's harder to like change and evolve than just like going viral because people can put you in a box so easily, right. especially for doing it for years. Like I think it's so smart. Like, even you doing your comedy and then like a little dabble of singing, it like right. establishes you in so many more. As a well-rounded individual. Uh, yes. Right. And I think that's what's catching everyone's eye. They're like, what the fuck is this Chris? Yeah, what can't, right. <laughs> what can't he do? What can't he do? He's everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> I think that's what's really tough too is a lot of creators get really scared to leave their niche because they're like, well, my like people aren't going to watch the videos. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that might be true for a second because we all, like everyone kind of blows up for their thing. Uh -huh. Everyone has their thing. But like eventually if you're able to share yourself in a way that you truly believe is like, something that will be well received or you are very proud of whatever you're making as long as you love what you're making then like fuck the views for the time being 
continue sharing what you blew up for, but then also share the rest of yourself because they're not going to accept it if they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Like if they, if someone has never seen you sing, we can't expect like, oh, well, as soon as you share it, it's going to be amazing. It's like in today's culture with so much instant gratification is we all expect when I post this first thing or as soon as I do something, everyone should love it. And it's Mm -hmm. like, no, that's not true. Even where I am now, I know there are certain videos if I posted, they're not going to be received in like the most beautiful way ever. But if I'm really, excited to share them then that's what matters oh my god totally I forget who told me this but there's an analogy of every video can't be a home run because then it loses its its special feeling because if you have every video goes viral and gets 30 million views you're you're gonna get used to that versus like why that was so amazing and I keep looking at you because obviously you're in the video (laughs) too um like that's what makes it so special when it actually does happen so that kind of helped me because there are certain um videos that you know I'll post and I'm like oh this is actually good for xyz like this is good for pretty basic or like oh this is good in the long run for um my fashion whatever you know like so I think that's so important for creators and I think it's so rare because you've only been doing it for a few years to already understand that yeah I mean that's why I started that second account that I have not Olsen Chris which I for the longest time I didn't know I was like wait which one's the real one (laughs) you're like is this truly a fan account I know I was like like, there's no way what what fan has all of these like really like (laughs) deep uh, camera roll video yeah so I started that because I realized I wasn't having fun making videos on my main page anymore because I felt like I had to always cater to the audience there and not make stuff that I was excited about as much and then I started the second account and I was like I'm gonna make whatever I don't care about how it does I don't care about anything I just want to share myself and like if people want to watch that then that's great but I wasn't having fun with the app anymore which sucks because like everyone when when I was a, a kid in college or in high school I would like to to think that I could be just making videos on the internet for money or for my job that's supposed to be fun it's supposed to be like the dream it's supposed to be so exciting and then you start doing it and you're like why is it feeling like a chore and am I feeling am I just not grateful for this like why am I experiencing this when I should be um, enjoying it again so I kind of started this other one as a means to try to enjoy what I was doing and it did bring back a lot of the fun. And I realized, okay, there there is this audience that does want to see the other sides of me and want it, wants to like experience the well-roundedness. And I think it, it like, you know, if you look at a creator like Brittany Broski, um, who is just sharing all of this, like, uh, you know, her, uh, her highs, her lows, and all of like everything in between, she has this fan base that is like obsessed and mm-hmm. loves her. And I'm one of them. And like Broski Nation is just like, will ride. <laughs> Broski Nation. I will rise. Well, exactly. <laughs> like they will uh, to, like fight to the death for her. And I think it it just goes to show how she is someone who just shares themselves authentically. It like, you know, that is well received by people, but it is tough to get. It's not like, you know, it's not the easiest thing to just share that and then like expect people to love it. Yeah. Off face value. It's a whole new level of vulnerability. But right. also like you, I feel like are at the same level as Brittany in, in that sense also where like the camera panned to you at, at a Harry Styles concert and they went almost as crazy for you as they had do that for Harry. Like, crazy. do you know what I mean? Like, that's insane. Oh my oh, God. <laughs> wow. Can Look at that. Can we talk about this for a second? That, I love the pink, first of all. It's more on brand for us. You guys should frame <laughs> frame that and put it in and Maybe be like, this it. is the authentic one. I'll yeah, sign, sign it, please. Um, that was, yeah, that was insanity. Huge shout out to Macy's for being an amazing partner and friend to our show over here at Pretty Basic. We love you guys so much and you guys just you guys always have our backs for any and every holiday you know what I think about when I think about Thanksgiving with my family eating all the good food sitting inside being cozy you know what I like to turn on and watch you mean the iconic Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade the only thing to turn on and watch is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade football we don't know her (laughs) (laughs) which speaking of this year marks the 96th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade with all of the amazing floats and balloons and entertainment that we're used to. This year's lineup looks awesome. I mean, for me, when I think about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, I always think of Charlie Brown and like a giant turkey. I feel like Charlie Brown is always what sticks in my memory and is so nostalgic for me just around this holiday season, even though I really didn't watch Charlie Brown growing up. You didn't? I just resonated so much with truly the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I just remember being little and not really knowing what 
the parade was and and every year you know hearing the excitement with my relatives being like turn on the macy's thanksgiving day like i feel like that made so much excitement about it and now that i'm older like i want to do that for my kids one day you know what i mean like also 96 years 96 girl that's amazing also, obviously, there are so many great deals and offers going on at Macy's right now, but it would be wrong not to take a minute to appreciate the legendary parade. The parade will be live from New York City on NBC and streaming on Peacock Thursday, November 24th, 9 a.m. to noon in all time zones. For all of the fun details, check out Macy's.com slash parade. So there are a lot of like conspiracies now that it was like a planned moment and I would like will not lie to the Internet. That was not Planned. Really? There People was, think it was planned. There was so many. Yeah, I guess because he knows everyone. But you look so happy. <laughs> you can't fake that happiness. No, and so. like you can't like I. There, there were just so many elements that somehow came together that night. That was just insane. Like right before the, I wasn't even gonna bring a sign, but um, uh, once again, Shri came with me, and I was like, I, I think like there, there's a section of the show where he mm-hmm. addresses signs, and I like tried to put something on my phone the last concert I went to and it's just so small and like we'll be kind of far so let me just like go to Michael's real quick and get a sign and then we were sitting and I was like what should I write I was like maybe just like daddy like (laughs) I don't know like something shocking enough that like fans in the pit will probably see it and laugh but like uh, he's probably not going to say anything but I can hold it up and lol and what's funny is so we we made the sign went to the concert and then I started holding it up during one of the songs and someone from behind me yelled like put that sign down That's the worst. and I was like Ugh. and then I was just holding it low the whole time so if you if you watch that video back you can see I'm actually holding it really low once the actual sign section of the when he's talking to another fan uh. I'm holding it really low and like trying to film underneath because I'm like I don't want to hold it up and yeah. get people behind me pissed again yeah And then while I'm holding it low, the camera guy happens to flash me on the screen for a second. And I was talking to Shree because you can see me turn to the side, but I happened to catch the quickest glimpse of it. And I heard everyone scream and I was like, I, I think, I think that just happened. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to keep holding it. And I was like, you know what? For one minute, fuck the people behind me. Yeah. I'm going to hold this up and see if that camera guy was actually doing it. And then he obviously like showed me again and then. The whole moment happened. Um, but yeah, it, that was like it. I I kind of like I, I don't really remember. Oh, you the, blacked like, out. I'm I, sure I, I blacked the <laughs> because I was just like I knew I did know that the next day there were going to be a lot of TikToks made about it, probably oh. because I was like I was just on the I, I've been to Harry concerts before and people sometimes film me and make these funny videos. And it's like so fun and hilarious. But I was like, now I am on the jumbo. And you were on there for such a long time. Like when I saw the clip, I was like, how is how does it feel that Harry Styles is literally talking to you? To me. To I, you. Again, like I don't even remember <laughs> what it was like to have him be looking at me. I just remember being like, you just have to act normal because <laughs> TikToks are going to be made tomorrow. <laughs> act normal. I was literally holding Your up PR the sign. training kicked in. I'm like smiling. I'm like, Haha. I give him a, I gave him a thumbs up at one point. I'm like yeah. Um, so it's, I was literally like, I don't remember. Th- and then I remember afterwards, like right after while he was performing the second song, I was just like, I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what just happened. I could never have imagined that would, that would be a thing that would, and it was like just everyone's, insane. Everyone screamed, which make, which made them go back. To, like it just caught. That I was the like thing it was is just- it was so funny because it, like, Harry does not know who I am. So now every, he does. Well, now he knows me as the daddy son. <laughs> like everyone, so everyone is screaming because like some of those people do know who I am, but he thinks they are just screaming because the, the sign, sign says daddy. Oh, you're and so I'm so like, right. I'm like, which is hilarious yes. that he is literally like, wow, everyone really <laughs> likes this daddy sign, huh? And I'm just this random guy in a Danny Phantom Danny suit. Phantom. That with is a thumbs up. With a thumbs up. That is too small. I couldn't even zip it in the back. Oh. And so I was just like, I was just like, this is, I cannot imagine, I can't believe all of these things that are happening right now. But it was not planned. It was very insane. And it was like, I, it's got to be marked down as one of the like 
best moments. Do you still of my have life. the sign? Oh, yeah. I framed the Good. sign. Good. Yeah, I was like, should. don't get rid of it or sell it. I framed it. I hope to get him to like maybe sign it one yes. day. I don't know how I'm gonna make that happen, but like you know, th- through our good friend Megan. I was gonna say, Megan. how did Megan react? Yeah, she, was, she was so happy for you. Well, because her and I had gone to the concert together a few days before. Yes, that's right. And she was like, she was so happy. She was like, why didn't you bring the sign when we went? I was like, <laughs> I didn't have the idea. I was just like, okay, but that really would have been what was fun with with Megan is they share a manager. So he had heard that she was going to be there. And so he kept like looking over and like smiling at us during the show. What and a that, sweetheart. That was really cute. Uh, but, he was looking at you. But I definitely, <laughs> absolutely. <Obviously. laughs> but what's funny is I don't think I th- like there's I doubt he was like putting together Mm-mm. after the daddy he was like well that was the guy that was with <laughs> Megan like like he is seeing he is seeing thousands yeah. of people yeah. every night he's not like well if my calculations are correct <laughs> that was the one with Megan so um it was just like such a such an insane moment and I'm like still so I'm so happy that there are so many videos of it yeah. because again I don't remember it <laughs> so just to be able to watch it over and over again I'm like wow like he's really and and honestly the most fun thing is the fan edits that people are yes. making oh my god of him just like looking and saying yes <laughs> and then it like thirst traps oh to all of the, my and god I'm like, I love it I love, he's boom, such a boom, good performer boom. he's such I saw a good him. performer he was so good he's so good so yeah that was like a life changing moment for me that's like a Wattpad fantasy yeah I feel life. like things are like different after <laughs> like like my like I've shifted into a new plane I'm like <laughs> I'm like aware for the, fr- I've just like woken up for the first time in my life. Like <laughs> I just like spawned after that moment. I've been, game. yeah, I've literally been like in idle mode until then. And now I'm awake. How like you exciting. Now you know what living life is like. Like food you know? tastes better. Like colors are brighter. Every, it's just like, <laughs> I, I'm here today uh-huh. and everything is making sense. <laughs> everything is finally making We're sense. We're really, really time. happy for you. No, stop. This is no, it was really, it was, it was really cool. Just like a uh, pinch me moment. Is he done? Are there more shows? Are you going to go back m- again? More shows. I don't know if I'm going to go back. I feel like I peaked. That was end on a high. I think I, I, I think I peaked at that show. Yeah, exactly. Like, end, like quit while you're ahead. I feel amazing. It was also so funny. Like the next day, just waking up to like texts from people who oh I haven't God. talked to in like years being like, why did I hear from like my aunt's sister's cousin <laughs> that you were on like the my I brought it up in therapy. I was talking about it in therapy for some reason. I was like, oh well, I went to this Harry Styles show and, and she's like, Oh, I, I know. I saw. <gasps> Stop. Yeah. She said multiple people I'm yeah. No. How yeah. professional of her to keep it to herself though until you brought it up. Yes. No, she always so we've discussed because actually the reason we got reconnected was um I had done therapy with her when I was in treatment back in the day. And then we stopped for about a year and then she texted me a screenshot of me on her for you page. And she was like, Oh my God, was so good to see your face. And I was like, Oh, well we should FaceTime sometime. We FaceTimed. And then she during the FaceTime, (laughs) no, but during the FaceTime, I was like, Hey, by the way, like I'm I'm actually pretty anxious about all of this. Like, can we start doing therapy? And then she invoiced me. Yeah. Yeah, so then we restarted after that time. And so I do come up in her For You page every once in a while. And she was like, I can, like, you can block me. I don't have to. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I honestly would rather you see what's happening in my real life. Because then I can just. Right. I can be like, so you know that video. So that was like, actually, I'm blah, 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 blah. That's actually really, really good. Yeah. She doesn't like, she, she tells me she doesn't like look me up or anything. But if I come across her For You page, she's like, she'll watch whatever's going on just a little quick oh catch my up God. on everything i've been yeah. with the same therapist for probably like five years now we did take like a year break in between but it was funny because more recently she's also like not on socials at all so every time i was talking about like my life and everything is going on i was always like worried in the back of her head she's like oh cute like what you know all this right. stuff cute. And then, like i don't know and then finally um i had a billboard <laughs> right and, and she, as one does <laughs> uh, you know we, as we all have <laughs> No, I've never had a billboard. And literally I was like, oh yeah, I have a billboard. She was like, wait, what? And she had never like researched me or anything. So I finally had sent her a video of mine oh and she was God. like, oh my God, I had no idea. Yeah. But it would have been way easier if she found that. Like I was yeah. like, oh yeah, this, it's, it's random. It's so weird to explain this world to people. Yes. Yes. It is. It's such a weird thing because I'm also always rescheduling with my therapist because I'm like, 
literally on Monday, I was like, can we do a little earlier? Because like, I have to do a video with the vice president. <laughs> um, Casual. <laughs> so Casual. like, Ms. I don't know Harris? if you'd be able to. Yes, Miss Harris. Harris. I think you've heard of her. I don't know if you've, you'd, you'd be able to switch or anything. <laughs> but yeah, I love my therapist. Uh, I think everyone needs therapy. Yeah. How has your mental health been since starting social media? It goes in and out. It was really bad near um, the, like, I want to say like a year in, I was like really not happy um, just with the way things were going and like wasn't happy with the relationship I was in. It was just like a really tough um, time that was very transitional because I had been doing social media for like a year and I was like, I just like, why aren't I feeling like dreams are being lived and why do I feel like not happy just like when I lie down to go to bed. And so yeah. I think it, it, there were a lot of big changes that happened around that time, but I feel like recently I've actually, I remember like literally the other night before I was going to bed, I was like, life is pretty good. Good. That's amazing. I feel good about things, but I al always like, I'm, I talked about it in therapy yesterday that I get scared of big feelings. So whenever I'm too happy about something, I'm nervous because something I'm like, bad's gonna come. yeah, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, things have been going too after the, after the Harry that. incident, I was mm -hmm. like, this is going so well. And then I was like, they're all going to turn on me. Aww. Like everyone's going to hate me because I, uh, I did this moment and people think it's planned. And like, should I not have brought the sign? Like was, was the sign a weird thing? I was oh just like, God. I immediately started overthinking. And then I was like, Chris, that was like, um, you had such an amazing mm -hmm. moment and you had such a fun time at the concert regardless of that moment. Like, but it's so easy for me to think like, okay, I need to think ahead of all the ways people are going to like, go wrong. be mean to mm -hmm. me. me. So after the Harry thing, I was trending on Twitter. My name was trending. And so yeah. I clicked on the name and I was Which, like- first mistake. <laughs> first mistake. But it's hard. Granted, people were being really nice yeah. until I scrolled deeper. And then there was a tweet with like, 30 likes so you know it wasn't crazy but it was like Chris Olsen has already started destroying our community we need to get him out oh and I was gosh. like I'm sorry for the daddy so <laughs> I just need to destroy a community no. with it, um, but, and, it but, and it hurt for a second yeah. but then I was like Chris you you decided to look at that like yeah. at the end of the day yeah. just close the phone close the computer um but I I get very scared like and it's not only happiness. If I get really sad or mad about something, I'm like, oh, I hate I hate that I care so much. Mm -hmm. I hate that I'm feeling all of this. So I think my mental health goes in and out, but being in therapy has been really helpful. And I honestly think I've surrounded myself with a lot of good people recently. And being connected with Megan has just been like, I, I've just loved like uh, spending all of this time with her recently. Um, and being able to experience such cool things with her album release and all of those things. And like, she is just so excited to take me along to these things. Even if I'm not really going to do anything there, she's like, just like come to Fallon. To experience it. Yeah. yeah. She's like, Taylor Swift will be in the building. <laughs> so like, you'll at least be able to just like breathe. lay come your eyes yeah. on her. Um, so just come to Fallon. And I don't know if I we're going to get that. to do anything, but just come. That has to be so fun for her. To see this whole industry through like new eyes, essentially. It's so cool. And then it's so cool for you to have like a mentor who's someone who's like willing right. to pour into you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like that's awesome. Well, because at Fallon, like outside of your dressing room, they put your name. And so she literally like pointed out her name and she's like, that's going to be your name. And we're going to come back oh. and I'm going to be your plus one that ah. time. And I'm like, You're, what are you talking about? She's just so sweet and, and like uh, really believes in all of the people around her and just wants to like bring everyone up with her foster i love her so i much. love her that's so yeah. sweet yeah she's truly amazing oh my gosh when you went to school for music did you want to get obviously probably into music in the future correct I, so i went to school for musical theater so oh. i was <gasps> doing like i was ready to move to new york i was ready to be on broadway, broadway baby what? yes. what's your favorite musical oh my god that's tough I want to say my like a current favorite is um, Hades Town, which is currently oh. on Broadway. Actually, oh. um, it's like a Greek mythology um, story, but it's with this kind of like modern folky music. Oh. It won a bunch of Tonys. It's really yeah. good. Oh um, my god. Uh, Eva Noblezada, who is one of my favorite Broadway singers ever, is in it, and so that's one of my favorites. But then, like, if we go more mainstream, I'm a Wicked girl at the uh, end of the day. I was gonna was say I, we're pretty mainstream, but we love, love Wicked. Wicked. Wicked is so good. Like, I, I, I remember really like discovering more about it in my teenage years, and just being like, "Wow, I'm a." Once again, that was another awakening I had. Oh, I was like, same. <laughs> 
I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> Wicked is a good musical. <laughs> Um, so that kind of that was definitely a moment oh I had. Yeah. Um, well, our friend was over this. Our friend was over this weekend, and <laughs> we played Wicked. And the next thing we know, he's like, "We were very drunk." We were very drunk. Right, we're right. Just right. right. Um, our friend like lifts him up, and they do like a lift for the oh. divine gravity. For divine sure. gravity, obviously. Sure. Obviously, obviously, he, obviously. He, he was more thrown, and he spun and fell, and. Uh, Ow. Her, yes. Okay. It was Can I funny. show you the video actually? Yeah, yeah. show us the okay. video. Okay. But I just roll the tape. Roll, roll the clip. The, you just got to see the this. Clip. Well, so first off, they did it and they spun and it was stunning. Okay. But then and they we weren't it. filming. So then Alicia started right. trying filming and said, Can you guys do it again? Uh, she wasn't filming in time. She told them to stop. They couldn't stop. So they just kept going. Um, and she was really upset because she didn't have it on. <laughs> She didn't this have it on video, gravity. <laughs> um, but luckily I do have home cameras. So okay. feel free to just hit play. <laughs> you can just see the flying oh. and he was flying and then hit the ground. Wait, he did that really elegantly. Thank you. So good. Thank you. That was beautiful. Love your, uh, your big ass cloud couch. Thank you so much. L- Laura DIY <laughs> has come. the exact She did same. copy me, but yes, thank you. Oh. Order here first. <laughs> Listen to that tea. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. So we love I, the the goal was to go right to New York. I never thought about like music. I want to do music specifically, but I was ready to just like hustle and audition in New York. But I also didn't really think I was good enough. So I was like, I'm just going to be a fitness instructor and do that and like um, just kind of like live my life and and hustle in that way. But I'm so thankful TikTok happened because it gave me honestly a lot of belief in myself again mm. because. I think in like any artistic industry, there are so many talented people. It's really easy to stop believing in yourself because you're like, well, I'm not the best because who is the best? Like art is so subjective, but I think I, I was able to find my own voice on a platform that was welcoming me very quickly. And then I was like, wait, maybe I do have something to say that people want to listen to, or maybe I do have a perspective through the art that I want to do that will make people see me. And then being able to share my singing and to share a little more of my musicality throughout that has been just like the cherry on top. Absolutely. Because and then it like, keeps it a hobby. Like, right. You know. And and when it's a hobby, it's fun. When it's work, then it's work. And I think being able to continue having it just be this little like fun thing. Like, I don't know if down the line I'll ever really want to like drop an album or something like that. Um, I mean, never say never because, mm-hmm. you know, there's definitely things I would like to do. But um. I don't know if it, if that's definitely a route I want to go, but I do love being able to like share a singing video every once in a while and just have people be like, oh yeah, he sings. He can sing and, then if, and he does all these other things too. Right. And then if like Broadway calls one day, I'll be like, hello. I would love. What do you want? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could see it happening though, especially because you do already oh. have this platform where you're, show, you're essentially like auditioning all the time. Yes. By posting your singing videos. There's, there's like, if, if there are certain shows that like are going to come back or something like that, I will definitely be like, I we need to make this happen. Yeah. I will start my campaign on TikTok. Dream dream role overall. Um it's a show called Next to Normal. Oh. Um and it's yeah there's it's like do you know the show Dear Evan Hansen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say it was one of the like uh p- procedures to that like okay, it came okay. it was it's a show of six people. It's very emotional. It's very dark. Um, and there's a role, Henry, in it that I would love to do. And I actually became friends with the guy who originally played him. Stop. And so I'm like, I feel like I'm, I'm close. Yeah. I feel like now that I'm close to the original One degree. Broadway cast, yeah. it's yeah. like, okay, now I need to, now they just need to bring the show back. God yes. forbid they bring it back. Henry accidentally trips down some stairs. That would be <laughs> You're so ready. Obviously, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like understudy moment. That would be really rough <laughs> to experience. Poor Henry. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like you know, theater is hopefully still in my horizon. Too bad Glee's not a thing anymore. Cause like even just a cameo I episode, you know. would are you fuck a Glee? Shit up. I'm a Glee. I'm a Glee. I'm a Glee. I think we can all admit at this point that we were <laughs> all Gleeks at one point. Were you a Glee? I don't really watch. See, it. I was gonna I'm say. I'm so sorry, but I was I was in band. You, but you like missed. But you <laughs> do you realize band. like how like w- what deep culture you missed out on like yes only because of her because all yeah. the references i'm like i just it was it was it was the moment i went to an all boys school for middle school you were a warbler like no <laughs> like a warbler with more homophobia and less singing oh no um, so but but i went to an all boys school and it, i think it came out when i was around in like seventh grade glee did 
and it would come out on, I want to say like Mondays or Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. And so the day after Spanish class was my first class of the day, every day after the Glee episode came out and me and a few of the guys there would sit in the back of the class and we would like get there a little early and oh. debrief about the last night's Glee Wait, episode. I love that. And so I had this like little pocket of safety yes. that we would like go to Spanish class, talk about the, the Glee episode while we could and then class would start. Oh. But like one of my friends would like, we would listen to Glee in our headphones, like our one earbud and one yes. ear and one ear and we would like walk down the hallways but then if we were ever playing it out of the speaker we had to stop it if any of the other guys were oh around my God. people would be mean yeah but i was i was such a gleek it was such like a deep part of my culture i, I agree half yeah. the songs no three quarters of the songs i know in my head are from glee yeah i, I know the glee <laughs> version first oh, it absolutely. taught me a lot of Faithfully. music uh, yeah. Always a lot right of journey here. songs, a lot of journey, mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot mm -hmm. of journey. Like I feel like I, I've honestly listened to the Glee version of those way more. I honestly don't. I didn't even know Faithfully was a journey song till right now. It's a Glee song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a Glee song. Yeah. It's a Glee song. Yeah. I mean, honestly, and every like every uh, Naya Rivera May She Rest yes. song, she is incredibly eight. talented. Mm -hmm. She ate. We were listening to her, the Bad Romance Glee version, Ugh. and she just comes in with this like, Brassy, she growls at one point. Like she is all she was always giving a hundred and ten percent. Yes. Being able to listen back to some of that just makes you realize, like, wow, while that set must have been a really hard place to be on, like you guys created some art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful to Valerie. Watch. Valerie. So good. All the dancing so sequences. I'm like obsessed with River it. Deep Mountain High. Oh my God. When her don't and Amber even, saying that together. Don't even get you're me I, it's just like every, they keep going higher and higher and higher. It's like insane. And the cameos they had were all sorry. No, <laughs> we, we I, can this get off is, this. No, no, no. This is what I get. No, for they not. had they had Britney Spears on there for an episode. The the Britney episodes were insane. They got Britney on do for two. Yeah, mm. there was they had they had like Gwyneth Paltrow, Gwyneth, I yeah, Gwyneth sang at one point. Um, Kristen Chenoweth, they were all Kristen on Chenoweth, it. Yes. yes, she Damn. sure was. It was so good. It was amazing. You gotta watch. No, when you drop me off on the way home, we'll listen. <gasps> <Yes>. <laughs> what song should I play for? You're absolutely, God. River Deep you, I mean, I feel like I feel like unfortunately you have to start with like a "Don't Stop Believing." No, I can't. But, <laughs> right, I can't. I'm right. sorry. Well, you could do "Don't Stop Believing," the like regionals version, the mm. one that comes later, where yes. Amber gives her like she wails. I love to the that. Sky. I love a Tina True Colors also solo. The, the, and that was because <laughs> I remember that vividly. That was the first time she ever sang yes, a solo. Without the stutter. Yes. And I was in, we, my dad, sister, and I were in our grandmother's house in South Carolina watching it on like a nine inch television and it was staticky. Aww. But we had to watch the Glee episode that night. And I remember just being like, Tina's singing. <laughs> Tina's singing. <laughs> Tina's singing, you guys. She Are you guys speak. seeing she this? Tina is singing. Uh, and I was just like, it was crazy. It was such a big moment. My whole life, everyone says I look like Jenna Ashkowitz. I'm like, I think we're just Asian, but thank you. <laughs> you're like, you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> whoa, whoa. See um, you, true you should, color. you should have her on. You guys should do now that her and uh, Kevin yes. restarted their podcast. Do a dual podcast. That be you gotta watch. All the seasons, okay. and then they can come on. Okay, I'm not gonna let them sit here. Okay. If you don't know what I'm talking I, about. Okay, okay, that's my homework. I mean, you could she could tap out about season five. She could tap <laughs> out. Agreed. Okay. She could tap out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> once um Jacob Artist and them came in, I was kind of over it. Yeah. I didn't like the the Niata. Uh, what well, did you watch the Glee Project? No, but yes, just like bits okay. and pieces. That was also a pretty cultural moment. Well, because like Phineas came from there, right? Did he really? Yeah. Right. Who's that? Um, Billy Eilish's brother. <laughs> he was on the Glee project. Yeah. yeah. Did you know this? He Whoa. Was, yeah. Wait, I thought I watched it. <laughs> I, I guess maybe I, I did and I just didn't know who he was yeah, at the well, time. Yeah, he was very different. Yeah, my my mom, my sister and I would watch it on like a little laptop every summer. <laughs> How cute. Um, it was yeah, I remember like vividly uh watching those moments and really caring about who was going to be on the show. Like it, that was that was huge because the thing uh, season one like they had like four winners they had four people get oh. to the final and then they just let everyone win and be on the show oh the guy Samuel was from the Glee Project as well that they brought yes. onto the show I remember him yes, yes. yeah yeah, yeah. that's a phenomenon yeah. I could talk about Glee all day all day, all day. <laughs> they, like there could be a separate podcast just for Glee uh 
I think they actually just dropped one. So right, that, <laughs> right. But like even, but like fans, yeah. like fans of the show who have nothing to do with yeah. the show whatsoever. Good call, good call. I should, we should do that. Y'all should start one. <laughs> no one, literally no one cares to listen. No, there's people right now who are stoked and then there's people who are me right now who are like, yeah, some people fun. just skipped this entire It section. was a little problematic, though. I it mean, was. I know we've all decided that, yeah. but... As we all know, my favorite day of the year is coming up. That is Miss Black Friday. If you have been following either of us for a while, you know that we do love a good Black Friday haul. And if you are wanting to do some shopping this year, um, Macy's has the Black Friday gift guide that literally will help you not only save time, but also money. Black Friday is pretty much Alicia and my uh, origin of our friendship. We would uh, run into each other at the mall every year and we'd always, you know, catch up for a little bit. And truly that is what the origin story of our best friendship. So Black Friday is very near and dear to our hearts. Also, Macy's has a gift finder. So no matter what your budget is, if you're thinking super luxe to even $15, there's something there for you, whether you're treating yourself or buying a gift for the holidays. As we all know, I love to be a girly that's ahead of the schedule. I've already started buying all of my gifts for Christmas, and this is the best time to complete holiday shopping. And we don't have to be last minute in December when everything is picked through and we're rush shipping everything. Like this is the perfect time to get ahead. I I'm such a list person. I always, every single year for holiday shopping, have a list of everyone close in my life in my notes, in my phone. And that way, if I randomly have an idea of like, oh, I can buy this person this, I'll write it in my phone so I don't forget because every single time I think I'm not going to forget, I always forget. So definitely, you know, use a little list. If you hear them say, oh, I would love to have this, write it down in your notes. You don't have to get it for them. Also, it's Thanksgiving coming up very soon, and we've got to get the turkey ready. We've got to get the stuffing, the desserts, everything ready in the kitchen. And you guys know I'm going all out for Thanksgiving, as I always do. So this is the perfect time to look to Macy's for maybe the supplies that you need to set the table or to bring your favorite dish to Friendsgiving. Basically, they have everything from beautiful decor and serving wear to kitchen supplies and outfits to get in the mood for our family get-togethers. And also, for entertainment, we obviously have the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is iconic, as we all know, and just a fun way to do something to entertain yourself on Thanksgiving. And whether you are Remy, who is cooking up a storm Thanksgiving, or you're like me, who will probably just cater something, Macy's has you covered for anything and everything. So to make the most of your Black Friday shopping experience, check out our gift guide that we've put together just for you guys, featuring our favorite trends and products at www.macy's.com slash pretty basic. That's macy's.com slash pretty basic. Enjoy your shopping. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> public relationships. <laughs> so that's actually a perfect segue for what I was about to ask you next. Um, what about them? Um, so. I want to wait. Before you go on about this, yes. I just want to preface for everyone who's going to be like, he's still talking about this. She's asking me a question. Oh, about well, it. then let's not talk about it. No, it's just I, I have. Ex I remember on the Lord DIY podcast, someone yeah. said. I was talking about someone I dated post the relationship. I saw your TikTok reply to this. And someone and a bunch of people were commenting like he cannot be still talking about this relationship. And I'm like, number one, <laughs> you tell me that you didn't go through a two year relationship and you suddenly stopped talking about it, even after years yeah. of I'm it sorry. passing. I've been through like kisses and I still talk about right. it. Right. <laughs> like there's a lot of processing time. So yeah. if I was still talking about it, it's okay. Yeah. Number two. If I was still talking about it, it's probably because someone asked. Yeah. I don't really bring it up just unprompted. I'm like, so anyway, I would love to talk about my trauma. <laughs> also, they don't and know the which ex. <laughs> right, exactly. And so, um, but that was also, a t and I've also, I have dated other people yeah. since that's, and uh, you know, none of them have stuck, <laughs> but I've dated other people since. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying in bed. <laughs> Um, since the relationship. So I do have, a, I do have things to talk about, but I mean, also I feel like it is helpful for me to be open sometimes about that situation that I went through because, um, a lot, there, there are a lot of like everyone, whether you're in a public relationship or in a private one, we're all having issues that we're not talking about. Absolutely. That we're just being like, oh, well I've, I've, I am. I'm perfect or like my, my relation, like we lie to our friends about our relationship all the time. Mm. Like we, and I'm sure there are a lot of relationships out there that are actually perfect and you maybe don't lie to your friends, but like 
I know I have at least had a moment, a bunch where maybe things haven't going the best. And a friend is like, how are things with X? And I'm like, they're great. Oh, <laughs> they're great. Yeah. Couldn't we're, be better. we're in love. <laughs> we have so much fun and it's so hot. Um, it's so and, hot. and it's so hot every day. Um, I just miss them so much. <laughs> yeah. I just miss them and all of that. But I think, yeah. So, um, I just think it, it, it's also then easy to judge people on the internet because mm -hmm. people are like, well, he like, uh, again, it goes back to people being like, I didn't know you sang. It's like, there are some people who have only ever seen content about me talking about my relationship because oh. they maybe haven't seen the other stuff. And yeah. so it's like, yeah, you know what? I don't even fault you for getting a little annoyed, but also like, Check out some of the other things yes. I'm doing because I promise I'm trying to deliver <laughs> not a my lot. Fault. Your <laughs> algorithm is serving you that stuff. If yeah. Your <laughs> algorithm is fault. serving this relationship you're, content you're over and it. over again. It looks like maybe you just need to be you you need to hear some things. <laughs> yes, yes. Um but yes. So what were you gonna ask? So sorry, but regarding <laughs> just public relationships, obviously you had a very public one. I did. And did that kind of teach you that moving forward you want to pull back a little bit? With future yeah. relationships, I don't. Think? I don't think I'll ever share a relationship in that way. Okay. I think I actually think it's a bad idea for a, a lot of people. I think I've yeah. we've seen a lot of relationships get torn apart um, because of it's it's unnatural to hear that many opinions about your relationship. Oh my god, Absolutely. it's and hard it's enough tough. with just in real life with friends, family, etc. Like let alone we've had so many friends who have had like public um, like YouTube channels, joint ones, whatever, and like they always end up so bad because usually what right. happens is you know, you start building resentment and then, you know, your partner brings flowers. Right. And then at first it's cute, but by the 10th time you're like, wait, so are you just doing this for the vlog or because you want to give this yes. to me? Like, yeah. and then they usually break up. Like it's so, it's like almost like a, it's crazy, but it gets views. Like people love that shit. People like, love relationship yes. content. And it, it's honestly all of the things that people really love, which is like relationship content, family content, um, and like, you know, like content of like babies. Yep is all slightly problematic yes. to film. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes, yes, yes. because if you're just making videos of your, your child, then like it's, they don't really have a say in that. Yeah. And, and like, I get sharing, sharing like your child and sharing like a kid every once in a while, it can be really cute. And uh -huh. like, at, we, everyone does it, but like there is a line at which it's like, okay, and now are you exploiting your kid? Yeah. And then, Family channels. I don't mean, I don't even get started. we don't even need to talk about that. Like they are by nature the most unnatural thing in the world. So crazy. And I mean, you have again children who aren't really able to consent to wanting to do that work, and then relationships too. But yet, each one of those things is like most. people just want to see because it makes sense. It's like that is the human experience. Mm -hmm. Or I want to see something aspirational like a relationship I want to be in or a family that seems like they really like have it together or they're doing these fun, crazy things. Or like I, everyone loves a, looking at a kid because they're always so cute. But like it, it's, I don't know, there's, it's a very nuanced conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think I've also found a lot more happiness in just creating things on my own that are not like always hinging on someone else yeah. while also loving to work with other people at the same time. Uh -huh. Yeah. But when it's other people that I really vibe with and that we have fun working together. So yeah, if, if I'm in a, another relationship, you know, if that person really wants to do a TikTok together, then we can, but it's not going to be like, we are a couple yeah. channel. Yeah. Well, yeah. I saw yeah. a TikTok recently, which was crazy to think about. Cause it was saying how out of the family, you know, vloggers back in the day like the kids are about to start being older and being right. teenagers and we're going to start hearing like their side of the story and like right. it's Oof. weird because you never really thought about that you know what I mean like yeah I don't know it's crazy right right and in relationships too I think the one difference and like protection there is you know we were to like uh, consenting yeah. older adults to making this um and you know there are many things that happen that we've decided to like not share and not mm -hmm. talk about especially since the breakup um but if you're a child growing up, it's like, wow. Like I, I there was a viral post that went around recently from an anonymous kid in a, an influencer family oh my God. who was like, I have never been able to live for myself. Everything has had to be uh. filmed and I've never felt like I, you know, was receiving love unless it was on camera. And it was like oh, heartbreaking heart. to read. Um, and it just solidifies like. And they think it's normal. It, like, they, they think, think it's normal. Every That's family's what like you that. have to like. It's, it's how you have to experience growing up oh in that God. way. And I, I just can't, I'm, I'm so grateful a lot of the time for like the fact that I only really ever got a platform when I was 22 because mm -hmm. like I was already an adult and I already felt like I could make decisions for myself. And I lived a very regular 
childhood mm-hmm. and college life even like it was just super normal i always wanted to like maybe like be a little famous yeah. at some point oh, we but, all did oh yeah my God. but i was also like i i grew up in like a sub a suburb in maryland and you know played soccer on the weekends and had like a really fun normal childhood and so to think about doing what i'm doing now but having to do it as a kid would just be like I would I would so quickly resent it for oh, sure, and I would resent percent. my parents. Absolutely. I'm not, and I don't want to comment on like you know how these kids may feel about their parents. Mm-hmm. Maybe some of them love it, and that's amazing. But I think if I were to play that through myself, I think it would be really tough. And especially coming from a very normal childhood and background, you know right. how great that is, and how right. how much we should appreciate that. So yes. it's hard. You just feel bad for the children. Yes, I feel that too completely. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Heavy. Well, yeah, should we, we should pivot to something like, you know. like I would like you to give some dating advice to Alicia, please. Oh, okay. Oh my God. I, well, I don't really, ha- I, You're I don't, like, am I capable? I don't have the best dating advice because nothing has really worked out for me. Um, I, uh, you know, it's like the things that come up are like, be yourself mm. and, <laughs> And show your crazy day one because if they can't handle that, <laughs> they can't handle then you at crazy work. day ten. They right, don't deserve exactly. You your but I, I genuinely like I'm figuring it out right now. Yeah. I have no idea how to go about things. Isn't it weird? So, okay, so when a lot of people ask me, they're like, "Oh my god, how's dating?" Da, da, da. I get so I overthink everything. Anxiety, right. woo. Um, yeah. but all how, like. The thought is always in my head, like, oh, they're only into me because I have a following and they want, they, they like that or like whatever. Like, have you noticed a stark difference from before starting TikTok to now with dating? Like, are you more hesitant towards people? Like, cause you don't want to act like, oh my God, I'm such a big deal. And people just like want to be with me. But at the same time, like, it's scary because you're like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think what's, I, I am more hesitant on like going on dates, but I think what I've also experienced is that, um, a lot of like, uh, honestly, one really pivotal moment was um, uh, a, a hate video came up on me on TikTok and it was by another gay guy who was just like, I have never found like none of my friends, like none of us find this guy funny or entertaining or anything. And the comment section was just horrible. Um, but of course I clicked on it because I'm of sorry. course you do. So comment section was full of other gay men and it just made me scared to be like, okay, wow, like I, you know, my, my, and 85% of my following is women. So it, wow. it, it makes, it made me scared to be like, wow, do, does the gay community just like not like me at all? And so I get, I get very tentative on like, um, even putting myself out there in that way. And then when I do, I'm like, do you like me, but do you hate my content or something like that? Mm-hmm. Um, which is, it's so funny because like when I meet someone, I almost hope that they haven't seen much yeah. of my content or they've seen just a little bit. So like I can, cause my content even though it's for millions of people feels vulnerable at the same time. I'm like, no, but that's also just for my friends. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Like, no, 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 but you shouldn't watch that. <laughs> like you shouldn't, even though millions of other people got to watch it. Like, but you want to you act not chill. You. Like you don't care. Right. <laughs> but right. then at the same time, Oh my God, we've talked about that so much on this podcast about like, like they, w- if I was to be like dating a guy and it was reversed, right. They have a huge, fo- of course I'm stalking. Like, of right. course. So right. I know that they're going to, we've had multiple instances where, you know, a guy will listen to a podcast or something and then later like mention something about it. And we're like, Oh, right. So you listen through 40 minutes. Right. Which, uh, that's, that's a lot of, <laughs> a right. Lot. It's like, what did I say well, during that podcast? Behavior. I'm like, did you watch me like climb onto a pole and crock heels? <laughs> and what did you think? <laughs> Most importantly, <laughs> and, rated out of 10. and were you into it? <laughs> or because if so, um, yeah. So I, I guess I've had like a little bit of um, not knowing whether to, like uh what to share in those ways but I think I'm also like I'm 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 finding a lot of uh love and just like being by myself and Mm -hmm. like under and like being okay with that because I think for a long time and with this profession that we do a lot of it is always about like being around other people and getting feedback from other people and getting validation. And so I try to like sure. center myself and being like, okay, and I, am I still happy when it's just me and my own thoughts? Because I think that comes most importantly too. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like I, I, there are times when I'll meet someone and I get very like obsessed with that. Also dating in LA is tough. I was going <laughs> to ask yeah. since you moved here, 
in the pandemic and then now you've been dating here it's God. it's a whole other ball game it's right? the worst and like you'll meet guys who are like yeah dating in LA is tough like I you know people are so flaky and blah 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 and they will be the, the ones, ones that are tough and flaky yep. and like I literally had a long conversation with a guy about how you know yeah dating is hard and like you know he just hasn't been able to find someone who's like really chill and like it's just been tough like because the community in LA is tough then I didn't hear from him for four days <laughs> and I was like Babe, get a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Babe, get a mirror. And then, of course, when I stop, like, I, I also hate when I stop giving myself in a natural way that then some people, like, start showing me the energy that I was always wanting. And I've had that experience too many times that I'm like, now I feel like I'm teaching myself that when I don't give love, that's when I receive mm. it. And I hate that. Oh, I that hate that. Because I'm, I'm a person who loves to love. Yeah. I just want to, like, I love being really... Um, and then, you know, obsessed in the cute way. When mm -hmm. I use that, I'm not like literally crazy obsessed. I love being like obsessed with the person I'm with and I love wanting to talk to them and be with them. And I think I realize that sometimes I don't receive that energy back until I start cutting it off because sometimes I'll do that and then I'll realize, oh, this person is kind of pulling away from me. Maybe I'm being too much <laughs> and then I'll stop. And then they'll start being I'm like, obsessed. hey, like I, they'll give mm -hmm. the exact things that when I was giving them my energy, I was like, I just wish they would like call me every once in a while. But, you know, I can't I can't control another person's actions. And then suddenly I'm not talking as much and they're calling me and they're doing all the things that I wish they did when I had maybe asked for it back yeah. in the day. So I, I think it's it's. I'm, I'm trying to unlearn that moment and be and realize that there will be a time that I give someone my love and my energy and they'll receive it and want to give it back in the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, we it, we're also like I'm young. I don't yeah. it's, I'm not in a rush to find that moment at the same time. But our culture is so relationship centered, so it can be tough. Can I ask what your type is? A man in his thirties, um, <laughs> as daddy. we know from the sign, <laughs> daddy. daddy. Though Harry is twenty-eight, so like I would make an exception. Oh, obviously. Um, also, no, it doesn't have to be a man in his thirties. It's usually someone who's a little older than me, because I, you know, after going through um, rehab, which I went through five years ago now, I did feel like I did a lot of growing, especially mentally, in that yeah. short amount of time. And so sometimes when I'm trying to connect with, you know, an, another gay man my age a lot of gay culture can be about partying yeah, and about yeah. like going out and going crazy. And sometimes people who are a little older have kind of like done their thing and are like, I'm ready to chill yes. now. Mm -hmm. And I am ready to chill. I've been ready to chill since I was 19 because okay, I had yeah. to. So I think I've started connecting with people who are a little older. What else? I'm, it usually is someone with dark hair, but that's not a requirement. Me? I'm like, I love a brunette. <laughs> I'm like, I do like dark hair, but that's definitely not a requirement. And I think it, it's uh, usually someone who, if we can have like a, a relatively deep conversation on date one, I know we're good. Mm. If it has to remain all surface and I kind of have to dig to get there, I don't feel like um, there's going to be much to go to because I love being deep. Oh, like I'm a deep person. I want to talk about like the things that we've been through and we don't have to, I don't want anyone crying. We don't have to fucking like trauma dump on date one, but it's like, Tell me about like, uh, Life. yeah. What? Tell me like, what do you fear? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I know. I love that. I want to know Some what you substance. fear. Yeah. So I can use it okay. against I'm you. I'm going to think of people because we know, we know people. We know lots of people. Mm. Great. Great. Love yeah. Like, and also like we only broke up like about a year ago. So like I am okay with, you know, continuing this single journey because mm -hmm. I do subscribe to the belief that it will find you when you're not looking. Always. Flash flood warning, you guys. Oh, right shit. now. In Los Angeles of all places. Do not attempt to travel unless you are fleeing an area subject to flooding. I didn't I get I hope your house is okay. Breaking <laughs> news. Flash flood warning in LA. Put on your rain boots. <laughs> get your umbrella, <laughs> ladies. Yeah. So before we end, this has been amazing, but we do have some- It's been so fun. Some viewer you know, questions, some fan- Let's talk about questions it. Questions for you. It. First one, what's the best date you've been on? I, I, I was like excited about that question and then realized I do not know the answer <laughs> of it. The best date I've been on. Or the first one that comes to your mind. Oh my God. I'm really trying. Wait. Oh, I recently went on a date 
to Hollywood Horror Nights Cute. and I had never been there before and that is a good date spot it's a great because you're consistently date. So scared. I'm so oh scared and I'm so small I'm so, so small petite. and I'm so scared no, and I'm like, 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 you just like put your arm around me <laughs> um and that was a cute one no it is uh, it that, didn't end yeah. up working out with that guy but that was that was a fun one were you I, actually scared or were you faking? I, honestly, yes. I mean, they okay. jump out at you. Yeah, no. come out of- they they jump out at you. But that was I do I love a date where you go do something. Mm-hmm. I also love a dinner date. But I think like you know an activity can be can be really fun. Yeah. Oh my God, no. I That's a good by first that. one. I think first yeah, date. Yeah. Yeah. That that was a good one. But I I I mean, if I think back to. God, I'm, we're bringing it up again. Um, the last relationship is I used to, but this is a good moment from that relationship. Pre-TikTok or anything, when we were dating for like a few months, I used to come out here on my weekends from Boston. He was living in LA. I would like take a Friday night flight out and then leave Sunday on the red eye. Oh my gosh. And so we would have these two days together every two weeks or like once a month. And we would like do stuff in LA and I'd never experienced time here. We'd like drive out to Malibu on a Saturday and just like go to the beach. And like, I'm like, you know, 21 in college in LA for a weekend. And that was just like such a crazy fun. I was working at the Equinox kids club. So I would spend basically my entire paycheck on these flights and then like survive for off of $20 for the rest (laughs) of the week. But it's like you're in college. So you're like, I'm just going to rough it. So those were really cool fun dates. And those are like a nice time to still look back. I love that. That sounds really fun. Yeah. Next one. We love. How do you spice up the roommate era of dating and living with your partner? I got no advice. I was was going to say, I got no advice either. I think like I, it's really tough to live with your significant other unless, well, no, that was just my experience. So let me use me <laughs> words. It was tough for us to live together. And I think that was just like not, um, I, I had I, I don't know what to do. Like, because again, I'm a person who loves my alone time. He was a person who also loved his alone time. So like, how do I think again in my next relationship, it'll be a while. And like, what's wrong with separate bedrooms in your home? You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, why not do that at some point? Like, I there, I feel like I know, I, I remember growing up and, like, seeing some of my friends' parents who would have separate rooms or, like, separate beds in the mm-hmm. same room. And I was like, that's weird, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But then my parents got a divorce and theirs were still together. <laughs> no! My parents got a divorce and theirs were still together. So I was like, clearly they're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. But I don't know how you spice up that, that era. I mean... Uh, I truly have no advice. Play a sex game. I was going to say, little role play. Little role play. Like, what if, okay, you said roommate era. What if you pretended you were roommates? And what if you walked in, you were like, hey, put the bag down and like walked over. You're like, I just have to get some work done. (laughs) And then you just like, kind of like bend over the desk to get some work done. And you're like, (laughs) this is when you come up. (laughs) And then, um, you know, you just have them kind of like, scurry up behind yeah. you you know i don't need to talk through the entire thing i like this. do something like that <laughs> leave a little for the imagination right, right, that was right. that's good love i think i'll that. try that one out yep <laughs> it's been a year and he still won't say i love you is that a red flag yeah uh, i do unfortunately think that's probably childhood trauma like i it may be someone like his parents or people who loved him in his life never said i love you why have i never thought from that perspective everything is from childhood yes that's what that's my therapist work through a lot so whenever i'm having like a trauma response to something that's happening today she's like what situation does it remind you of from childhood and when it's when i get i get one of the worst like one hate comment that affects me the most is when people call me annoying And she's like, well, it's because you felt like you were too loud and annoying as a child because you were told that occasionally. And I'm like, right, right. So everything stems from our childhood. Oof. Mm -hmm. So if I I would, I encourage you listener or, and you two now, like if there are ever things that come up, be like, is this reminding me of a situation from child? Because have you ever met someone whose energy you just didn't like immediately? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's because they remind you of someone whose energy who wronged you in the past or whose energy really I'm hurt not you. Not me, literally in therapy right now. Oh because my you can't, god! You, how how do you not actually like someone who you just you met? Don't know. You've never, you don't yeah. know them, and yeah. then sometimes there's a lot of time where you meet them, you don't like their energy, and then they somehow win you over, and it's because no, you actually just got to know them. Oh. Because you just projected onto them this past person who had hurt you before. Holy shit. 
Yeah. Oh my God. It's craziness. Everything is a situation that we learn because how are we, how are we coming up with these ideas and these really deep rooted thoughts yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, if we don't actually know the full story about something? You know what that reminds me of? How I actually have never fact checked this, but I've heard that everyone in your dreams is someone that you've seen at some point in your life, even if you're walking down the street oh, yeah. or whatever right. it may be. You actually know them, obviously. But yeah. to me, I always like when I wake up from a dream and I don't remember that person, I'm like, oh, well, I must have seen them at some point. Yeah. It's kind of that similar idea. Because yes. you can't like our, our brains can't make up faces yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's pretty crazy to think back on a lot of the things, because now when I'm, I receive hate comments in a way, I'm like, OK, well, they're just kind of projecting on this person that is in their life that I guess I unfortunately remind them of, but I can't do anything about that. Yeah. And I'm so sorry for the situation that they've been through, but I'm, I am thankfully not that person, but I'm not going to be able to change their mind right now. So it's, it makes it easier to kind of read those things too. Oh my God. I love that. You've done so much self work. That's amazing. I've really done That's a lot. Amazing. Your therapist been, is great. She's great. She's great. Um, I've, I've been thinking about my feelings for years now. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. But then how could you be in a relationship with someone who isn't self-aware? Cause you're like, yes. I'm so self-aware. I need you to be a little self-aware. It's very tough. That's why I think I'm, I'm really down for like a, at Old, least a little bit daddy. of a deep conversation okay. and yeah, an older, like mm -hmm. someone who's kind of sat with their feelings a uh -huh. little longer. Oh my God. That's great. Next okay. Next question. How to make him make a move as more than friends. I don't think you can really make someone else make a move. Yeah. And if, if we're in that, uh, you know, era in our heads, then that's, it, we're already, it's a little tough. Yeah. Um, because I am a subscriber. I know some people are unsubscribed to this recently, but I am a subscriber to, if he wanted to, he would. Yeah. And because I have been the person who, when I wanted to, I would, mm. I remember there was a time I was like dating someone a while ago. And I was like, I just don't think I can do long distance because I just, you know, I'm in college and I don't think that would work. My next relationship, I made long distance. <laughs> You're work. like, I'm on a flight. <laughs> ah. I am on a plane, and um, I think I think that situation is true. If if someone wants to communicate with you, they will, and if someone wants to make a move, they will. I do think there is an argument to communication and mm -hmm. being like, hey, like I would, I I I've been having these feelings. Like, have you? And then you can kind of feel it out because maybe they're nervous. But I think when the want is strong enough, then a lot of people pull through with action. Do you think you could artic articulate as to why, one, you wanted to be in a long-distance relationship and the other one you couldn't make long-distance work, like, on the individuals themselves? Yeah, because I was, I think I was actually, like, I did not, I didn't really like that person in the yeah. way, I, I was actually very scared of his energy. It was, like, very intense very early on, and I'm, I love being intense, but it was, like, really like we you know he was like i'm looking for someone to like settle down with and i was i think 20 and yeah. in college and mm -hmm. i was like so young i am not <laughs> um and then you know with the other person um he actually like didn't really like me that much i felt like and so i was like okay well i'm gonna make this work because i need to win you over oh, um, so goodness. and i also felt less pressure because there was pressure from the first one and not as much pressure it's like relieving i'm sure yeah okay. so that was the that was the difference there too okay. oh my god let's do one more because i know we're we're pretty yeah. over how do i not put my self-worth in a man and whether or not he likes me slash thinks i'm hot that's a really tough one because I think we've all been there, but also I think um, it is, you kind of have to go through the grieving process of being like, wow, okay, he doesn't, but we have all been through horrible situations with men in the past. And that is exactly where they end up in the past. Mm. Like we, we have been through every single one of us has been through things we didn't think we could bounce back from, whether that's a small thing or a really big thing. And I remember a friend told me, like whenever going into hard situations to always remind myself that phrase that this too shall pass. Mm. And I went through a really, really bad relationship sophomore year of high school. And I remember he like, you know, it, it was like kind of abusive in a lot of ways. And so I was going up to like have a really intense conversation with him. And I was just saying that phrase over and over again in my head. But that really cemented that thought of like, Oh, that was like years ago. It felt so big at the time. And so these feelings that you have for this guy feel really big right now. But just kind of like accepting like, damn, I really wish he was feeling this way, but he's not. Let me just try to give some of that energy back to myself. And let me also feel the sadness because I think there's a big culture of being like, 
be a bad bitch. Don't give him that time or energy. Don't give him that power over you. But it's like, but we do. Yeah. We've all done it before. And you feel more worse about yourself because you're, like, you're don't like, don't feel bad. Yeah. Why am I not a bad bitch? Why can't I feel this? It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm a bad bitch. I can't do this. No, like every day in it's, the mirror. It is it's gonna be tough. Yeah. And like allow yourself to be like, fuck, like it makes me so mad. I wish it was different, but it's not. Mm-hmm. So let me just like let myself move on because in a few days it, or n- maybe not a few days, but in a few weeks you really will be like, wow, why was I doing all that? Like there are situationships I dive into and I'm like, I need this to work out. And then literally two weeks later, I'm like, ew, ew. <laughs> the ick. why did I do that? I was like, why did I care so much? Yeah. And then they do the thing of they're like, Hey, like, how are you doing? And I'm like, don't no. talk yeah. to me. Yeah, like, like I don't want to know. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, like, dare where you. where was this before? Yep. And so I'm sorry that sh- uh, our friend is going through that, but um, it will it will pass. This too will pass. And all, yeah, and then with the next ones, you can hopefully try not to put all that worth into it. Because will you? you probably will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you probably will, but it'll it'll be, it'll be easier because you've been through it before and yeah. you realize you got through it the last time it didn't happen. I feel like there's like a threshold. Of like just how much you like are, can be obsessed with someone, and as right. like it doesn't work out, you're kind of like, okay, like I'm still gonna be obsessed, but just not as much as the last time, right? Or right. like as we like to think. Yeah, and it's also like playing that game of like, wow, I am fucking obsessed, but I'm going to pretend my <laughs> hardest yes. that I'm not. Like I wasn't like looking at my phone all day yes. and just wait. And it like you get the text and you see it immediately, and you're like, I need to wait. Yes. 19 to 20 minutes <laughs> to respond to this. Well, they took 20, so I'm going to take 26. Yeah, so I'm going to take t- set the timer. Yep. That was me. That was always me. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> also, I feel like I, like, you always think you're never going to, fi- you're like, but I really like them. Like, I'm never going to find yeah. someone else. And then a month later, you're like, oh, wait, I don't care about this person. Mm-hmm. Now there's a new person who you have feelings for. Also, like, I kind of, uh, I feel like I'm entering my PR relationship era. Love it. Like, if someone just wants to date but doesn't actually want to date um, but wants to, like, merge careers, I'm ready. Harry. I have been ready for so. Harry. Harry, right. Harry. I mean, <laughs> Harry, you need me. Okay, yeah. wait. If you could say one thing to Harry, what would it be right now? Um, the, uh, Oddly enough, the first thing that comes up is, like, I'm sorry about that whole daddy <laughs> thing. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean for it to become a thing. Um, but it, no, I guess it would, oh, it would, it would, I, what do you say? What do you say? He's like, 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 hello. What did Brittany do when she spoke in her accent? Uh, Is that Harry? Harry? I think that's what she did. Which like, honestly, I get. Yeah. Like I would probably say something kind of ridiculous because you're just like, yeah, like it's yeah. literally like you're just like everything that's in you yep. is coming. I, I have no idea what I would release. It would probably just be like. I would probably be pretty quiet. Hi. I would just be like, hello. I love you. <laughs> you just cheesing hey, so Like big. it would be so, I would, I would be so worried about saying anything wrong. So I'd just be like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh my God. Beautiful. Well, where can everyone find you? I know we have two TikToks. Oh my God, you guys. Okay. Well, yeah. Mainly find me on at Chris on TikTok. I just started a new YouTube channel, <gasps> just Chris Olson. There's one video on there so far, and it's me singing with Shree. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Are we going to do covers, vlogs, yeah. everything? We're going to do covers. I want to start doing more vlogs yes. and stuff like that again, too. Um, and then on Instagram, I'm Chris Olson. Amazing. Love it. Well, any YouTube questions, we got you. Yes, please. please. I honestly need all of, yeah. You can roast our TikToks and be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll g- <laughs> well, I'll give you the TikTok, uh, the TikTok tips and g- you give me all the YouTube I would love I recently had a big TikToker tell me like, oh, your TikTok's cute. Like you look like a YouTuber who's like really trying to figure it out. <laughs> I was like. It's so true. tough when like and the read true. is accurate. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, like, I'm self aware. Yeah. I was like, it's okay. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you guys. so much for coming on. And be sure to catch us next Wednesday. Love you guys. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.